Hey, good morning, everybody. It's June the 19th, uh, Wednesday, and today's scripture reading is Job chapter 17 through 20. Let's pray together, please. Our God and King, we love you. Thank you for all that you do for us. You bless us every day, so Lord, we want to continue to thank you for those blessings. We ask, Father, that you lead and guide us today, that we be pleasing in your sight with everything that you desire for us to do. Father, may we be obedient. And we love you, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so continuing the discourse between Job and his friends, Job continues his reply to Eliphaz. Again, expressing his sorrow for his loss and confusion as to why he's afflicted. My spirit is broken. He says, I'm an object of scorn. People spit at me. Yet the righteous person will hold to his way. Job said that even though he was afflicted, that he would remain faithful to God. Chapter 18, Bildad continues to accuse Job of being unjust and one who does not know God. He still assumed that just because Job was, a, uh, was suffering severely, that he had sinned severely. In chapter 19, Job says, You mistreated me without shame. He goes on to say that it is God who has afflicted him, and he was right, but didn't know why he was afflicted. He, was, he has stripped me of my honor and removed the crown from my head, he said. Have mercy on me, my, my friends, for God's hand has struck me. Even as God had allowed his suffering, Job says, But I know that my Redeemer lives. And at the end, he will stand on the dust. Even after my skin has been destroyed, yet I will see God in my flesh. I will see him myself. My heart longs with me in me for that day. So Job uh, gives us a great, um, a great statement there. I know that my Redeemer lives. He, his faith and, and trust had not left the Lord God Almighty. And he says, one day he's going to come back. One day he's going to stand on the earth again and praise the Lord for that truth. And he says, even after my skin has been destroyed or he dies physically, his body dies, he says, I will see God in my flesh. He talks about the resurrection. And praise the Lord for that, that great hope that, um, that we will see the everlasting bodies the Lord has prepared for us in His kingdom. And He says, I will see Him myself. He'll stand before God Almighty on that day. Uh, hey, and that should be a, a, a wake-up call to us, helping us to understand and know that one day we, we are going to stand before God. We are going to answer for not living the way that He wants us to, or, and we will receive the rewards for doing what's right. But we will stand before God. And, and Job ends that uh, statement with, My heart longs within me. He's saying for, for that day when he stands before the Lord. All right, in chapter 20, Zophar speaks. He said, The joy of the wicked has been brief, and the happiness of the godless has lasted only a moment. Now, was he alluding to Job? Was he saying that, Hey, you were rich, but now sorrow has overcome you? Most likely. He was uh, talking about and ac accusing Job of that. Uh, so Zophar continues, He will vanish. His prosperity will not last. Distress will come. Misery will crush him. The heavens will expose his iniquity. And uh, this, uh, this is the wicked person's lot from God. That's what Zophar was saying. All right, so that closes out the, uh, the Bible study. Let me pause this and get my uh, thought for today. Okay, so the Christian has a personal living Savior to guide him. And Christ is revealed as the Redeemer. Jesus Christ is our Redeemer. By His death, He provided the required sacrifice for our sins. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, gave Himself for us that He might redeem us from all iniquity. That's Titus chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. God bless you and have a great day.